This is the second half of the rage from her uncle's house that I'm gonna talk about and then I'm hoping after this, I know I still haven't covered the Argate situation, but that might be like a next week Wednesday type of a deal. I'm a little bit burnt out on Chantel right now. A special thank you to my patrons, Acrophobe, Christina, Wild Rose, Jam Beans, Jay Thomas, Lauren Chris, Michael B. Petty, That British Unicorn, Sky Andropolis, Debbie Elliott, D. Higgins, Juliet Q, and Kate O. All right, first things first. How beautiful is this eyeshadow? If you guys are curious, I always like everything down below if you're ever curious about what I'm wearing on my face, but um, this is the Club Nebula palette. I literally like just got it. Oh, I love it so much. I'm like so excited to play with it. This is the first look I've created. So far, everything seems lovely. I'm also wearing their like the highlighter on my cheek that I got. Oh, I'm in love. Okay, second half of the video. Well, half. I covered the first 10 minutes in my first part of her uh, rage from her uncle's house. And then uh, this is the second half of that, I guess. Two halves of a video, but like my video. Her video, it's like first 10 minutes and then the other one hour and 10 minutes. I'm gonna condense it down. A lot of the stuff she just repeats again and again and again and again. It's just like the same points and she just sort of changes around her phrasing. And the one thing that I've noticed is that each iteration of that that she goes to each time she discusses the point, she's just a little bit more mad, right? So she's like a little bit more angry. She's a little bit more agitated. She's adding more and more thoughts and more and more opinions of her own and her beliefs on what their, other people's motivations are into it as she goes along. She's like working herself up into an anger. I don't know why she does that. And like, I, I, not to say that I don't do it myself, right? I, I myself exhibit some of that behavior every once in a while when I'm mad. It's like I'm mad about everything and I'll, you know, get, find more things to be mad about. Sometimes it's just fun to be outraged. Uh, and when I'm feeling like that, I just do it mentally. I do it in the solitude of my own head. And then I give it like a little bit of time to breathe. And then I'm like, okay, is that still true? And I'm like, no, I'm being a little ridiculous right now. And I let it go right? You need to sometimes give yourself time to feel the emotions that you're feeling and then think it through afterwards. Because when you're caught up in the heat of the moment, it's hard to look at things rationally. And I'm not saying that I'm like the paragon of rationale. I, of course, make the mistake of saying the thing that I'm thinking in my head out loud. But you need to understand when you do stuff like that, that you should still reflect on your own behavior later on. I think at some point in this video, I'm not sure if I'll put the clip in, but uh, she says something like, I'm not mad about shit. Um, and I'm not gonna say sorry about anything. And that's a really weird way to think about things. Do you think that you're never gonna make a mistake, that you're never gonna say anything that you're sorry about? Like, what is this, what is the point of doubling down on ideas like that? I, I don't understand that concept. I've said before, saying sorry is remarkably easy. The mental strain it takes off of you to admit that you are a flawed human being who makes mistakes and is just trying to be better is amazing. Knowing that about myself, knowing that I am always gonna have problems and I'm always gonna be working at it and everyone else is the same, gives me the ability to both show myself and other people so much grace. And that's all I'm asking for. Like that's all she needs to do for herself too, is understand that she is a person and she's gonna say and do things that are wrong. And as long as she's willing to admit that she's wrong and work on those problems, people for the most part tend to show you the same grace back. Once more, there is a limit to this, right? If you keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again and never seem to actually learn anything, just expect people to give you that kind of grace, it's not actually going to happen. But I think that to a great degree, you can get a lot of grace from people if you're just willing to be better, if you're just trying to be better. The outrage about that nice comment I left on Jen's thing. Like, it's so ridiculous. Once more, it is not about whether or not you are being nice. People leave you nice comments all the time and you've said as much in your lives that it's not about what they're saying, it's just that right now it triggers me when I hear people like doubting my progress because this is the thing that I'm doing right now, which is fair, it is perfectly fine, right? It's a fair thing to think if that's how you feel. But then you can't have one standard for yourself and a different standard for everyone else. If it triggers you to hear that from other people, then it might trigger Jen to hear that, not just from other people, but from someone that she considers to be in the same sphere as her, right? She's one of the girls, quote unquote. So the fact that you can dish it but not take it says very little about you. 
You don't seem to understand that people have their own depth of emotion, that they have their own lives, they have their own things going on. And if something upsets you, it might upset other people, right? You are not the exception to the rule. You are not special in that regard. I have things on my channel. I've said this before multiple times. There are stuff you could say about me. I have insecurity that if people point it out on my channel, if they put it into the comments, it would 100% upset me, 100%, without a doubt. That's why I don't put them up. That's why I don't expose my underbelly because I know people are going to talk about it. Unfortunately, this is how people are, right? For better or for worse, understanding the nature of the beast is half the struggle. You don't understand it. You don't care to understand it. You don't engage with people in any kind of manner that would make them feel more inclined to give you positive reinforcement and maybe give you kinder comments, but then you're more than willing to go over to other people's channel and dish out comments that you yourself would never allow. That's why I have it in my description in every single video. If you yourself would not feel comfortable receiving criticism in that form, then you should not be able to give it, right? And same thing with me. That's why I don't call her names. I don't call go for like low blows. I don't say like she looks awful or anything like that because I don't need to. She is enough of a garbage person that I don't need to talk about any of that stuff. I don't have to talk about the way that she looks. She would, I, I said it a bajillion times, she would be a garbage human person at 120 pounds. She would be a garbage human person if she had a like perfect body. If she goddamn looked like Jennifer Lawrence, and I, you can probably tell my girl crush one day, but like she looked like, like Jennifer Lawrence, she would still be a garbage human being because that's who Chantel is. She's bad as a person. Her diet is a symptom of that. I don't think it's like the cause of that. People don't hate you because you're fat. You're fat because you're a garbage person all around and the root cause of you being a bigot is the same reason why you use food to comfort yourself. I don't know what those reasons are because I'm not a therapist, but goddamn do I wish you'd listen to yours. <laughs> I don't know why it would be demonetized, but whatever. If anything, I think haters should be. Don't you? I mean, they're trying to destroy lives. They're causing drama. They're making up shit. You know, like I do my videos. I eat. Human beings fucking eat. I do things like I don't talk about people on my videos. Uh, no. You start drama. <laughs> you say bigoted things. You're a nasty, nasty person online. So, no. I 100% disagree with you. She had the gastric bypass and it's still... Exactly. And it's not just that. It's not her size. She's a fucking shitty person. She is horrible. She's so, like, seethingly angry. For what? You know? Because she believes, like, the racism accusations? Hi, Tracy! I'm not 100% sure who she's referring to here because she's talking to people in her comments and I don't have the, the live chat. So I don't know, uh, honestly, but I think she's still talking about Paige because she talks about uh, bariatric surgery. If you guys don't know, Paige has had a form of bariatric surgery, the specifics of which I am not aware of. But first of all, Paige looks amazing. She's lost a ton of weight. She's had two whole ass beautiful kids and she looks fantastic. She's doing great. And I've said before, and I'll say it again, the point of weight loss isn't so that you become like supermodel skinny, right? It isn't so that you have a thigh gap. The point of weight loss for most people, when you're, especially when you're morbidly obese, isn't even so that you get into quote unquote, the normal weight range, right? If you're never between like 120 and 140 pounds, it's fine. Just dropping down from morbidly obese to obese will change your life tremendously. Just dropping down from obese to overweight will change your life tremendously. You know what I mean? It's not about perfection. That's why like most websites online, I think the, the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and the NIH both have on their websites that the goal should be 10% of your body weight, right? So for, for Chantel, if she's at 400 pounds, which I don't know and quite frankly, I don't believe, that would be weighing 360 pounds. If she can get down to that and she can maintain it, that's a fantastic weight for her. It would improve her liver function. It would improve her mobility. It would improve her breathing. It would decrease her, decrease her chance of developing a ton of different diseases. So the idea that you can only, that the only people who can talk about Chantel are people who used to be morbidly obese like her and now weigh like 112 pounds and are supermodel skinny. If you're anywhere in the middle, if you're like me, right, who weighed a lot more, has been slowly working her way down to being at a quote unquote healthy normal weight, then you don't have any time, then you don't have any space to talk. Nothing you have to say is valid. 
And once more, I'm still waiting for people to tell me why Paige is shitty, right? She's had some tiff back and forth with uh, Smoky Glow, but beyond that, I have not seen any evidence that Paige is a actual bad person. Maybe she's had some questionable decisions in the past, but even those have been pretty minor, all things considered. All the haters say that she's, every time she does a video, keto's not for you. I wasn't even saying, like, I was just, my comment was just like, what I was learning about it, you know? I'm not, anyway, I'm not justifying what I said, like, fuck it. I said what I said, it's, it wasn't mean. People are making a big deal. People who, like, have no life are making a big deal. And this is the thing. I actually side with her on this. I think her comment was 100% fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with her comment if you just look at it in isolation, right? 100%. And I actually agree with her and once more in the sense that, yeah, probably keto is not something that should be recommended to people who have binge eating problems, right? Especially if you're not getting the emotional help that you need. Binge eating has a lot to do with uh, how much food you eat, but it has even more to do with your the mental thought process that goes behind uh, the the binge eating. And so if you're not dealing with the emotional component of it, the food is just food. And so I agree with her as a whole. I, I don't think that restriction in keto, and not that I think there's anything wrong with keto. And once more, I've said before, there's even binge eaters who've gone on keto and lost the weight, right? But they were getting emotional help with it. So I agree with Chantel. I agree with her comment. The problem comes down to hypocrisy. If you can give advice to other people based on information you have from your dietitian and doctor, not information you yourself know, right? Because you are not a dietitian, you are not a doctor, you are 0.0% qualified to give any kind of information. I am more qualified to give information than you, which is to say not qualified at all, right? That's why I don't give my opinions without saying these are purely my opinions, take it or leave it, right? You are not qualified to be giving that kind of information and you don't have any personal evidence, no anecdotal evidence even to give, right? I at least have that. You don't have any anecdotal evidence to talk about either because you have successfully not lost any weight. So it's not about whether or not the comment was fine, which I once more 100% agree with her, the comment was fine. It's about whether or not you're being a hypocrite and you were. You wouldn't allow that kind of comment if Jen had come onto your channel and said, hey, I know that you're trying intuitive eating, but I really think you're doing a poor job. Why don't you try keto? Uh, I, you know, I have done my research and it's had great success for a ton of people. I'm doing keto too. And I found keto to be very, very satiating. You would have lost your damn shit equally as much, I think, as how much you're losing your shit now. And people have said similar things to you about your diet and you don't want to hear it. So I don't want to hear this whole, oh, they can dish it, but they can't take it when you're talking about reactors because you are the clearest example of someone who thinks the rules should apply to everybody but them. You are the exception to every rule. Case of terminal uniqueness, if I've ever seen it. Okay, um, Gomez, but she doesn't get outraged over other people. The hundreds of comments she gets of other people leaving her advice and being rude. But my one nicely worded comment, and somebody who supported her for a long time, fuck her, she's not getting my fucking support ever again. She can kiss my fucking ass. And no, I am not nice to people who are fucking rude to me or are bullies. They can all kiss my ass too. <laughs> so this argument that she's presenting here about, well, what about all the other comments? That's, it's actually called whataboutism. And uh, it's pointless. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter whether or not, Ch uh, Chantel, whether or not Jen should have, could have, did pin other people's comments, whether or not they bothered her. First and foremost, you four, right, the four core group of girls are the ones who get, quote unquote, the most attention from the haters, right? So in Jen's mind, and same in yours, because you seem so upset by her in particular, you guys are compatriots. You are co-workers. You, you share the same space. You have camaraderie. And to have one of your own come and attack you like that is going to hurt a lot more. Like... I didn't tell my siblings about my, my YouTube channel for like a while. And the reason for it was, was because I was scared they were gonna think that I was dumb and when I was talking online that like I sounded unintelligent, right? Please don't take any offense here, but the opinion of my audience means less to me than the opinion of my siblings, right? Like I know them, I know these people, they're my friends, they're my, my siblings, my, my two, tiny siblings they're not tiny anymore they're both adults now but in my head i still see them like they were as little kids and i'm their big sister and i 
I don't want them to think poorly of me. I care about their opinions. They mean a lot to me. So if they had been against it, if they didn't like my channel, if they thought I sounded bad, then a hundred percent I would have felt like devastated and crushed, right? But when it comes to a lot of the audience members, some of you guys agree with me, some of you don't, some of you have been very kind and pointed out when I've been wrong in the past, which I appreciate it. Please keep doing that. Um, and as much as I appreciate and care about all that, it doesn't hit me emotionally the same way it would coming from a loved one. And this is the same thing. I'm sure it's not to the level of my mom said something about me or my sibling said something about me, but it is to the level of, hey, this is a coworker and they're talking smack about me. It still sings. And so when it stung you, you made like 70 bajillion hours worth of content about it on your channel. But Jen can't be mad about the same thing that you as a fellow fat girl and one of the girls can't talk about it. One of the members of the Amberverse can't talk about it. Like, just put yourself in her shoes. That's all. Try and look at it from her point of view. I'm not saying she was right. I'm not saying that you were wrong. I'm just saying try to give other people the same kind of grace that you want for yourself. She, Jen's a liar and she's fucking fake. <laughs> Hi, healthy pair. She is fake. I uh, don't really actually have anything to add to that. I just wanted to leave that clip in so you guys see her going, she's a liar and she's fake. And then immediately, hi guys. Okay, Jan. So, mm, asshole disease. I'd rather, you have fucking asshole disease, Ellie, so fuck off. What do you, heart, like heart disease shaming people? Weight shaming people? Get a life. <laughs> um, heart disease shaming. Well, you're shame shaming me right now, and I don't appreciate all this kind of bigotry, okay? Our weight is none of your business. Uh, yes and no. So, when you are a public figure, which Chantel is, right? She's got a pretty large channel. Um, when you're a public figure and you put information about yourself out there into the public sphere and make it public knowledge, you can't then come back and say, well, it's a private matter, don't comment on it. You made it public knowledge. You made it public knowledge, you put it into the public domain, and, and, and she'll say, yeah, well, it doesn't matter if they're public videos, you guys still don't have the right to talk about it. Yeah, we do. I mean, anything, public discourse is public discourse, right? It's free speech, it's protected by the law. And we're not slandering you and there's no libel happening here, right? Because we have, most of us have pretty strong evidence for coming to the conclusions that we do come to. For example, if I say that you're a racist bigot, uh, I have a lot of clips of you saying racist and bigoted things. So I have evidence of that. So it's not slander. That's sort of how slander works. And when you're a public figure, by the way, that bar is much, much, much higher. Once more, I refer to you to the, uh, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp situation, um, it really is very illuminating about the limitations of, and, of a standard and li a slander and libel. Just thought you'd like to know. Um, but coming back around to Chantel, when you put stuff into the public sphere that you know people will hear and see and have thoughts about and will want to discuss with other people to see what their thoughts are about, but then you immediately pull back and say, well, you can't talk about it. What you're essentially saying is, I can say whatever I want, but you are not allowed to say whatever you want. I have the freedom of speech, but you have limited freedom of speech. I have the ability to censor anybody else, but not myself. That's essentially what you're saying. And I hope you can see how ridiculous that sounds. I didn't shame Jen for her diet, so fuck off. Yes, you did. Yes, you did, you ridiculous trash bag of a person. Which, by the way, I'm sorry I haven't been able to get to comments recently. It's been a little crazy here. But um, when I say trash bag, what I, mean that, what I mean by that, or when I call her trash, when I call her a garbage person, what I mean by that is that I think that your opinions and stuff that's coming out of your mouth and your general personality right now is the equivalent of garbage to me, in that I think it has very little value. I'm allowed, to, I could turn comments off. That's what it's there for. So I'm allowed to pick and choose what I want on my channel. It's my fucking channel, not yours. 
who cares if it's public? It's still my channel. I have administrative right to do what I want with my channel. Why don't people get that through their heads? I have a right to moderate comments to any degree that I want to. Like, hi, Laura. So this is an interesting concept. Um, the concept of moderate, of moderating your comment section on YouTube. While she 100% absolutely has the right to moderate whatever she wants on her channel, that doesn't mean that she can limit what people talk about, right? Uh, I will say for me, I have very few things that are um, uh, moderated that I've like, uh, like automatically are no-go. So for example, if you have docs information of of anybody i've i've like struck in that i will immediately delete your comments for some people like for for charlie gold i have a thing set up so you can't like get around it um if you put any of that information in there it will automatically withhold you uh, withhold your comment um there's a few words that i don't want in my comment section specifically racist terms bigoted terms that i've also put there so that they, they immediately filter that out also links uh if you if you want me to see a channel or something leave the channel name don't like link it it will automatically also go into the uh held for review section which i a don't check very often and b is almost always broken for me i don't know what the deal with that is um but the reason i do that is because i get a lot of like weird spammy stuff it's just like linking to weird scams and like porn thingies so i just have that filter on so that if it so that if any time like a, a site like that shows up i don't want someone clicking on it accidentally and then their computer getting a virus so yeah link that but she can 100 percent do it 100 percent within her rights to do it but what it does do is that it creates a very weird atmosphere right so like if you look at Amber's channel, Amber allows everything. Her likes to dislike ratio is on. She allows all comments. I've, I don't think she moderates very much of anything. And while yes, I think that it does bring to light and show her a lot more of the negative stuff that people are talking about, what it also does is that it gives her a lot of engagement. It really boosts her channel. So she gets a lot of monetary benefit out of that. I think Chantel, one of the reasons why her growth is much lower than Amber's is because she doesn't actually allow free commentary. What it does do though, is that it pushes people towards other channels. If you guys have noticed, especially recently, because Chantel's been so strict on what people can and cannot say in her comment section, videos on Chantel tend to do a lot better than videos on even Amber, despite the fact that Amber is a much bigger channel and is the creator of the Amberverse, right? Uh, because those are the only places you can have conversations about Chantel, right? Um, forums on other people's YouTubes, Twitter, right? And a little bit on Instagram. You can't have them with Chantel. I can't, like, I would love if Chantel would, like, come on a live stream with me where I could have a calm conversation with her. Like, if I think that was a thing that could happen, I would, like, it would blow my mind. I want to have a conversation with her so badly just so I can understand what goes on in her head. I don't think she will. I don't think she would ever do that. But I would love if she did, right? Uh, and I think that's the reason why people come to channels like mine. Channels like uh, OPS, Charlie Gold, uh, Milk Tea Reacts, Smokey Steven Mark, for my entire list of, of people that I personally like fangirl over, uh, please check down below. Also, Shane's channel is really great for a laugh. I, I like, I, what was I watching a couple days ago and I was just like giggling the whole way through? Oh my God, it was great. Shane, please upload a video. <laughs> You've been missed on the internet. It's been like four days. That's craziness. Um, Kaylee... I don't choose what people is on other people's channels, but um, when it comes to hate and harassment, that's different. Learn the difference. Obviously, you're not a critical thinker. I don't think Chantel has any actual clue what harassment actually means. If she did, she wouldn't be so quick to throw that word around, mostly just because harassment means that I come to you and I say bad things to you and send you like mean messages and whatnot. Most of the reactors are basically just talking to their audience. I said before, I don't think Chantel or Amber are ever really going to hear or care about anything I have to say. I'm talking to people who are similar in circumstances to Amber and Chantel in terms of their health, but not similar in terms of personality. People who are willing to be persuaded and are willing to listen to others and try and better their lives and try and better themselves. Those are the people, my audience people, that I talk to, right? And I don't think that Chantel or Amber are ever going to listen to me because because as far as they are concerned, they already know everything. Yeah, my, my 
Tim Horton, somebody commented 2,300 calories and I'm allowed to eat that in a day. Actually, I don't count calories. Guess what? And when I lose weight and I get to eat what I want, you're all going to be fucking looking stupid. So take that clip right now. You're going to look stupid when I lose weight for eating what I want. She says this like it's going to like really upset me if she one day lost all of the weight and then became like an actual skinny legend. I would love to see it. Are you kidding? I would love to see Chantel being successful at her weight loss. I would absolutely love it because, and here's the thing, then Chantel would be both successful at weight loss and I'm 100% certain she'd be even more obnoxious than she is right now, right? Uh, Chantel, as I said earlier, is <laughs> gonna be a garbage person at 120 pounds as much as she's a garbage person right now. None of that's actually going to change, but she will be skinnier. And I wonder, I really wonder how much her ego is going to inflate as a result of that. I'm curious, as it were. But I would love to see her being healthier. I would love for her to live to be 80, you know? Because at 80, I'm pretty sure Chantel will still be making mukbangs and I can still talk about them. So it's a win-win. If you guys are wondering, I win because I have stuff that I want to talk about if I'm still interested in Chantel, which who knows? Uh, and Chantal wins because she lives to be an 80, which, honest to goodness, right now is looking less and less likely. No, they're not, Gemma. Who says everyone should eat the same portion? How do you know what a good portion is for me? I eat until I've had enough. And sometimes I overeat, and that's okay. You don't know how much my body needs. You don't know how many calories my body needs. Your body might need 1,700 calories. Another person might need 2,300 calories. Who knows? I think the whole cal counting calories thing is kind of bullshit, too. So uh, this is an interesting concept. The way that uh, they do food is averages, right? So for an average person, how many calories do you need in, in like your wake periods, right? Generally to function and whatnot for an average weight height sort of person. If you are taller and skinnier, you might need different calories than if you are shorter and fatter, you know? Just, it really, really depends. It is pretty individualized. And people who are intuitively eating, people who have known how to do it their whole lives, who don't have issues with food, generally are very good at moderating how much they're eating so they can just like kind of figure it out on their own. And this doesn't mean, of course, that you have to eat this many calories every day. I have had a few days where it was just really hard on me. I was just emotionally going through it. And so I only ate like 1400 calories. And then the next day or a couple days later when I was feeling better, I had like 2000 calories. It depends right on your mood. It depends on how you're feeling. It depends on what brings you comfort at that time. And once more, eating food is a very comforting thing. Everybody does it. It's just the extent to which some people do it that becomes problematic. So when I'm in a really stressful position, sometimes I'm so busy that I just forget to eat. I've had a day where I think I had like 400 calories because I managed to eat breakfast and it was like mostly just a coffee and like a piece of toast and that was it. And then I forgot. I was so busy the whole day that I completely forgot and I was so exhausted and I went to sleep with a headache and I woke up the next morning. I'm like, why do I feel like garbage? And I'm like, ah, that's why. I am literally like dehydrated and I haven't eaten all day yesterday. And it happens. P people's lives get in the middle of things, right? And so the next day I ate a little bit more because I was in a very severe calorie deficit from the day before. And if you look at it in the long, in the, in the long term, and you look at all of my weeks, I'll probably have like fluctuations of like plus or minus 100 calories on some days. And I'll even out to being about 1800 calories a day. And that's all I really aim for, right? It's not about like a very severe mindset. And that's how I look at it for me. And I feel that's how most people should look at it for themselves too. It's that it's not a very severe mindset that if it's like, at night and I'm watching movie with like partner or I'm doing like Netflix party with friends and people are sitting around where I'm thinking, oh man, really wish I could have some popcorn, but I can't. I don't think of it like that. I think, okay, well, it's okay. I'll just have a few handfuls. You know, I can enjoy it a little bit. It's, I just shouldn't indulge in it too much, right? So maybe I don't need an entire pint of ice cream, but maybe I can have half a serving or one serving, right? And some days you'll be better and some days you'll be worse and that's okay. As long as you see that and as long as you're doing it uh, in a fairly inconsistent basis, I think it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So, sorry. Very long tangent. Very long way of saying these are all averages and they're based on like average 
for most people. And if you are an unusual body type, then maybe consult a dietitian and they can point you in the right direction. My channel's Wendy's Taco Bell. Like you've seen one video, that's one meal, yeehaw. Like, do you not have, like, where are these people, like, do you not have any, do you not think, oh, maybe she's eating other things for the 24 hours that we don't see her? Like, get a life. Yeah, I eat Wendy's and yeah, I eat Taco Bell. And I'm going to keep doing it and I'm going to lose weight. <laughs> Be mad. Stay mad. Stay mad, she says, raging at 6 a.m. in the morning. Oh, man. I feel like she's talking to herself right now. Also, I actually really, really agree with her. Shocker. I know, right? Um, I really agree with her on the unconditional permission to eat part. Uh, that's one of the things about intuitive eating that I do understand and I do see. I think you should be able to eat everything, everything in the world to a certain degree, right? It's not what you're eating. Well, it is also what you're eating, but it's also how much of it you're eating. I, fun fact, will eat both pasta, like uh, pasta, like Alfredo sauce and like chicken on it and like no vegetables and also have a salad, right? I'll eat both. It's fine. It's fine for me to eat both. I'll have candy. I can have candy. You can have candy. Have candy. Everybody eats some candy. It's fine. But like eat a few pieces. Maybe don't eat the whole bag, right? And if you're going to eat the whole bag, maybe don't eat a whole bag every day. That's what I mean. It's okay if you consistently eat fine, like average food, and then every once in a while you have a good day or a bad day. Just like one salad will not make you healthy, one burger is not going to make you unhealthy. You don't have to eat healthy every day. You don't have to eat unhealthy every day. And that's what I think unconditional permission to eat really means and not what Chantel thinks it means, which means that eat all the junk food all of the time. Have whatever you want, eat in smaller portions, and do it on an infrequent basis, right? I don't limit foods. I don't tell myself I'm not going to eat X, Y, and Z. I have food restrictions, but those are like not based in diet. Uh, well, I guess they are diet, but what I mean is they're not, I'm not restricting them because they're unhealthy or because they're like whatever. I, I have different uh, cultural, religious reasons for not eating some stuff. Um, so I have that, you know, I, also ethical reasons. I don't need a lot of stuff for ethical reasons. But because I have those, I let myself eat outside of that whatever I want. If I want a candy bar, I'll eat a candy bar. Just like I said, plus or minus 100 calories. Yeah, sorry, I'll never understand keto at all. I don't understand why you... Ketosis is like meant for starvation. Like, why would your body... Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense to me at all. Like, fruit is not what makes you fat. That's what I said on Jen's thing. You know, like, she won't eat fruit. She won't eat grapes or fruit or whatever because there's... It's fucking fruit. It's healthy. But then she'll fucking... Um, like, you'll binge on, like, thousands of calories, but you won't eat fruit. So maybe it's the binging on thousands of calories that's made us fat. And I included myself in that comment. Us. Not eating fucking grapes. You know? Just because you don't get it doesn't make it wrong. Keto has a ton of benefits, especially for people who have epilepsy, who have diabetes, people who have uh, PCOS, by the way. All of those people can see tremendous benefits from eating a keto diet. And there is a dirty keto and then there is like actual healthy keto. What Jen does is dirty keto, which is all bacon and fast food grease and whatnot. Uh, I have a friend of mine who's actually been keto for eight years right now. And she focuses on a moderate amount of protein and uh, a high amount of healthy fats. So her fats come from stuff like olive oil, avocado, nuts, seeds, uh, things like that. And she's fine. She's had two beautiful, beautiful babies. Uh, and like I said, keto, eight years, literally 0% side effects. She's one of the healthiest persons I know. I think she can run a mile in like, I want to say it's under eight minutes. And she's been able to do, she did that all the way to her like seventh month of pregnancy. Do you know how insane that is? You can eat any fruit you want. Fruit's healthy. Even if you have diabetes, you can eat fruit. And yes, my doctor told me that. No, you cannot, you absolute fucking moron. Do not listen to Chantel about anything to do with diabetes, okay? Please, I am begging everybody on the internet at large. I'm ignoring all diet. If I want a bowl of fruit, I'm gonna have a bowl of fruit. 
I heard fructose doesn't even require insulin to eat, enter the cells. And it has fiber. It doesn't metabolize in your body the same way that processed sugar does. Who told her that you don't need insulin when you eat fruit? Who told her this information? I really need to know. Was it her dietitian? Because if so, this person should immediately have their credentials revoked. Fructose is a specific type of sugar. Your body breaks everything down to its molecular levels and that's how it uses it, okay? That's why bread and fruit essentially are no different from each other. It's just a level of fiber that makes a difference. So no, if you have diabetes, you have to be careful about the fruit. I'm like, I'm actually really upset about that. I have a ton of people in my family who have who are diabetic, right? We have a history of diabetes in my family, uh, primarily type 1 diabetes, the genetic kind. Do you know how awful her advice is? I have an uncle who can't, he literally is almost keto most of the time because he cannot have fruit, he cannot have rice, he cannot have bread. Like, just shut up. You don't know anything, so stop saying things about stuff you know nothing about. Because that's a disordered way of thinking is saying, you know, <laughs> Lisa, saying eliminate all, eliminate anything is a disordered way of thinking in a way. No, it's not. Not all restriction is the same because by your logic, then um, uh, Muslims and Orthodox Jewish folk or even just like more religious Jewish folk and um, Jains and vegans and vegetarians, all these people who are restricting for completely unrelated reasons would also be considered to have orthorexic eating patterns. And they are not because you're an idiot and you don't know anything. So stop pretending like you do. Like, <sighs> okay, I take that back. I'm not gonna call her an idiot. Chantel's not an idiot and I'm sorry for having said that, but quite frankly, she's being extremely ignorant right now. She doesn't actually know anything about how intuitive eating works. She doesn't actually know anything about uh, having problematic eating patterns, about having problematic dietary patterns. And if it's ever brought up to her, she's just going to go, well, that's not what I mean, you know, because she doesn't actually know. And she's hoping that the audience will fill in the blanks for her because she doesn't want to have herself corrected or change her mind on anything, which shocker. I know. Right. Who would have thought that Chantel is being an idiot <sighs> once more? Shouldn't have said idiot, but She's just, she doesn't know anything. And it really bothers me when she's giving like pseudo medical advice to people when she herself literally does not understand anything. Her, she has a huge platform. I have a really big problem with people giving advice when they don't know stuff, when it's medical advice about stuff. This is why I tend to link stuff when I can, you know, down below so that you guys have an awareness that it's not just coming from me. That's why I say, talk to your doctor, talk to a dietitian. Because even if I was any of those things, I would not be yours. And for her to just give such silly blanket advice to people who might be suffering from something and might end up in a lot of pain because of her is negligent and dangerous. I genuinely don't like that. And I, I realize she probably doesn't mean it that way. And I'm sure there's only going to be like one person in like 100,000 who would even listen to advice coming from somebody on the Internet. But it's still not a good precedent to set because it might influence somebody to think about things in a different way. And I still don't think that's a good thing with that disclaimer. Everybody check out Negs. I'm gonna, cause he does live streams and he calls out the stupid haters. <laughs> well, hypocrisy, like he's pretty neutral, like, you know, and funny. I find you funny, Neg. Okay. I know, I know, still not the end of it, still not trying to milk it. I'm just trying to make these videos shorter. I don't really, uh, I have a lot of stuff happening, work has been crazy, and I don't really have the time to sit down and, and like edit three hour long videos right now. So, and she put up so much problematic live stuff a little while ago, and I do want to talk about all of it. But, you know, time is time, and unfortunately, I'm literally like, like time is money, right? No, that's the saying, time, not time's not time. Time is time, but it's also money. And I am burning both of it right now. Nailed it. All right. <laughs> I'm going to get going. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, you can give me a thumbs down. That's totally okay. I respect everybody's opinions here. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Hit the notification bell down below and hit all if you want to know when I upload any video right away. Uh, if you want to know when I... No, wait, what was I going to say? 
I've got all my social medias linked down below. I've got Instagram, where I've got food stuff and life stuff, and it's a little light on both, but stuff's coming, I promise. I've got Twitter, where I'm a little bit toxic and a little bit petty, but I'm also a little bit entertaining. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, hey, that's where you can find it. And I've got Patreon. Think of Patreon as the tip jar for the internet. So if you like the job that I'm doing and you would like me to continue, consider tossing a few coins in my direction. You don't have to, it's not necessary, but I would appreciate it. Anyway. As always, I'm Jasmine, the sequel, and I am not relatable. Peace.